For anybody who's contemplating going natural. I'ma say this one time, one take, one lane, one gray, my food, my play, give up, I can't, no other option. One day, I might buy mom a mansion, if I could afford one, I'll buy a condo with some extensions. Hey YouTube, it is your friendly neighborhood natural Lex, or you may know me as Chocolex on YouTube, and I am back with another natural hair video for you guys today. Mm-hmm. And in today's video, we're gonna be discussing my natural hair journey, my natural hair story, whatever you wanna call it. We're talking about it today. I've been on YouTube for about two years. Right now, we sitting at about 622 subscribers strong, okay? Chalk Squad is growing slowly but surely. Today is March the 16th, 2020. By the time that you guys see this video, it's probably gonna be early April. I haven't told you guys my natural hair story or my journey, how I went natural, or I should say return natural, how I made the decision to return natural. I'm going to include pictures in here as well so you guys can see the growth. Before we get started, I just want to say that this video is probably gonna be a little bit lengthier. I can't talk about my natural hair journey without going into detail about some things. If you run across any questions that you may have, leave them below. Let's get into the good stuff, sis. Let's get into it. And sorry if I keep looking down because I do have my phone right here, but I just gotta make sure that I don't miss anything and I will do my best to include pictures and stuff from all these years, okay? At an early age, when I was younger or whatever, I always had hair. Um, I wouldn't say that I had a lot of hair. Well, actually, I did have a lot of hair, but it wasn't like super, super long, like down my back or to my butt or something like that. But I did have hair and it was thick. I don't really, really remember too much. I ain't even gonna lie to you. But what I can remember is I would get my hair like pressed out and like in cute little styles. When I got into the fifth grade, I'm pretty sure it was the fifth grade, but when I turned 10, sorry, this piece is driving me crazy. My mom decided to relax my hair. No, she did not do it herself. And no, this is not a story of, I used to have long hair when I was little, but then I got a, a relaxer or my aunt perm my hair. Y'all ever met a black girl who have a story like that? I used to have long hair when I was little, but my aunt perm my hair. Please tell me that I'm not the only person that has heard somebody say that before. Okay, anyways. When I was 10 years old, I ain't know nothing about no natural, okay? Didn't know nothing about it, so I wasn't opposed to it. I used to go to this lady, she was an old school stylist, like real, real old school, who um, she would relax my hair. Moving into my middle school years, I had longer hair than other girls, but it wasn't like super, super long. In middle school, I would primarily wear my hair down. Sometimes I would do ponytails, but most of the time it would be down. So in the eighth grade, I don't know how my mom found my stylist, but when I was in the eighth grade, I started going to this woman. I'm not gonna say her name because I don't know if she'd be comfortable with me including her information. So the stylist that I was actually going to in the eighth grade is the same stylist who was doing my hair in high school and in college. Up until now, you guys, like me and her, we have history. After some time, I did have, you know, split ends and such. So I vividly remember, you guys, she had to cut my hair because my split ends were so bad and I cried in her chair. Crazy, right? Now she does specialize in natural hair care, but at the time she was relaxing my hair because that's what my mom wanted and that's what I wanted as well. Back then, you know, I'm in eighth grade, I'm about 13 years old, I don't know nothing about no natural, okay? I just know relaxes, get your hair silky straight, and boom. When I got to high school, High school is where I started seeing, um, let's see, what was in back then? Micros, kinky twists. Oh my God, please. 
micros, kinky twists, stuff like that. That was really in when I was in high school. However, my mom did not let me wear weave like at all. When I got to high school, I was still getting relaxers. I would wear it down. What I used to wear, I hope I can find a picture for y'all and I'm gonna have to search like really, really hard for these. But I would do like this little front swoop, a swoop right here and a swoop right here and then put like a ribbon around it and tie it. That was the thing that I used to do. I also used to do side ponytails with ribbons or I would do like low ponytails. When I was in high school, my mom, she would wash my hair every single Sunday and she would blow dry it and straighten it. Every Sunday, never fails. I low key grew up hating Sundays because my entire Sunday would just be taken up. Like we would have church in the morning and then come home from church, eat, then I'll have to clean up the kitchen, wash the dishes, and then my mom would do my hair. Like, And then when it was time for me to get a relaxer, which was normally about eight, eight to 12 weeks, is when I would go and see my stylist and she would relax my hair. I remember when I was in high school, my stylist, she tried to convince me to go natural and I was just like, no. At the time, I only knew of one girl who was natural. She had very, very long hair, very healthy hair. I don't know if she watched my videos, but Audrey, that was you, girl. You're the <laughs> you're the one person that I knew who was natural. Also, when I was in high school, I ran track and we would have practice pretty much every single day. So me being an athlete in high school and being natural, it just wasn't gonna work. I graduated from high school, I went to college, and when I was in college, I would just like to say that keeping up with your hair and being in college is probably one of the most challenging things that you will ever have to do as a young adult. I was also a student athlete in college as well, all four years. When I went to college, that's when I started doing my hair on my own, and this was my first time having to do that because like I said, when I was in high school, my mom was the one who did my hair. When I was in college, we had track practice every day, then we would have weights three times a week, and um, if we were in season, we would have a track meet pretty much every week. Sometimes we'd have an off week, but not really that often. When I was a freshman, I was literally straightening my hair every single day after practice because when I would go to practice, my hair would sweat out, and after I would get out, after I would shower, I would basically just flat iron it again. That's heat every single day, like repeatedly. I honestly can't remember when my last relaxer was, but it was sometime between 2012 and 2013. I honestly don't really have an exact date for ya. With the excessive heat, the strenuous practice, my hair, it was, girl, it, but it was a hot mess, okay? Long story short, my hair was a hot mess. Freshman year, spring break, I go home, I tell my mom, listen, I can't do it. So she was like, well, why don't we get you some braids and you can wear that for the rest of the semester and we'll worry about your hair when you come home. I said, okay. My aunt was the person who gave me my first set of braids. They were kind of similar to like micros, but they had like curly ends. This was my first, weave style you guys I did not get weave in my hair until I was like 18 19 I think it was good that I got my hair braided because immediately when we come back from spring break we would be in outdoor season and outdoor season is hot you're traveling every week like ain't nobody got time to be worried about no hair sis at the time I didn't really notice but it was during this time that I had started transitioning my last relaxer was definitely sometime, I'm gonna say sometime in 2012. I had a bunch of new growth already and then I got the braids and I wore those for a couple of months until I came back home for summer. And when I came back home for summer, my mom, she helped me take down my braids and she was looking at my new growth and she was like, you know, you're halfway natural. Maybe you, 
you should try it out. So I was like, hmm, okay, might as well. Summer of 2013, I officially transitioned and it was hell, <laughs> to say the least. Before I went back for my sophomore year, I got singleese twists and those were pretty darn nice. I went to an African hair braiding shop in my hometown and they did me pretty well. I kept those in for a while. January of 2014 is when I officially cut off the rest of my relaxed ends. At that time, my hair was the shortest it had ever been in my life and it was very weird for me. Back in like, you know, 2013, 2014, that little time era. Natural Hair YouTube, that's when that started to become a thing. The summer of 2014, literally just months after I had Big Chopped, um, I was trying to make an appointment with my stylist to get it colored because at this point in time, I ain't got some growth, you know what I'm saying? I'm all the way natural, no lie, you feel me? My stylist is the type of stylist that if you don't book with her ahead of time, she won't have any availability at all. So I'm looking around, looking around for someone to color my hair. My sister gave me the recommendation to go to this girl. She was gonna charge me way less than my stylist and I was like, bet. So I go to her, I get my hair colored. Color is fire, you hear me? So cute, so pretty. And then about a week, maybe, or two later, I'm washing my hair and limp. My hair is limp, there's no bounce back, there's no curl, nothing. It's stringy, it's ugly, it looks, it's damaged. That's what it is, you guys, it's damaged. I'm like devastated. I remember sitting in the bathroom on the floor and just crying my eyes out. So what did I do? I transitioned again. And basically throughout my transition periods, it was kind of just me keeping up either like a braided style of some sort. So before I went back to school for, what year was that? Junior year, before I went back for junior year, I think I had got, what did I get? Box braids? or something. My hair was probably braided almost all of junior year with the exception of a, a few months that I would leave it out. But when it was out, it just looked a hot mess. Y'all, it looked a hot mess. Like my ends were just so stringy. There was no curl. I transitioned for a whole year. In July of 2015, I cut my hair again. And this time my hair was short and I had to go to my stylist, the one that I cheated on and I was just like, yeah, can you just, just cut it? Just cut it off? And she's looking at my hair like WTF because your hair did not look like this the last time I seen you and I'm like, dang, how I'm supposed to tell her that I cheated on her? And I just felt ugly, y'all. Like, going through that TWA stage was just not fun for me. Literally, I, I cut my hair one week. By the next week, I was in somebody's chair getting my hair braided because I'm going into my senior year of college and I don't want anybody to see me looking like this. Literally, when I talk about my short hair, I only have two pictures and that's because when I had short hair, I didn't take pictures at all because I just didn't like the way that I looked. In March of 2016, my roommate and I, we had went to Tampa for spring break. So I took out my twist to go on the trip and I'm finally about to see what my hair looks like since I cut it off. And I had enough for a little puff or whatever, okay? So, since then, what's happened? 
Then I graduated in December of 2016 and I got my hair blown out for graduation because I wanted to see how long it had gotten since I had cut it the year before. I had not used any type of heat on my hair at all, y'all, at all. It was a good length. I was like, okay, I got a little hang time under my graduation cap, you feel me? I ain't bald no more, sis, okay? Heat damage who? Color damage who? Since then, let's see, I get my hair straightened pretty, I'd say, more often than other naturals on here because a lot of naturals on here are just like, no heat, heat is the devil, heat will give you heat damage. You know, I have my struggle with heat damage. I um, had my struggle with color damage. It wasn't the best of times. It was actually probably one of the most challenging things that I had to deal with while being natural. But I love a good blowout, you guys. I really do. I, I love my fro, but I also love my straight hair as well. I love getting my hair straightened. I have not had an issue with heat damage or color damage since then. You might be asking, um, you know, like, why would you, can't, why would you continue to get your hair straightened after you already dealt with that? And it's just because I want to. That That's that on that, because I want to. As y'all know, or you might not know, but I did complete a year-long trim challenge where I got my hair trimmed consistently for a year to see if I could retain some length and that really did work for me. I was getting it straightened regularly. I think I got it straightened about six times within a year and I didn't have any issues with heat or color damage. Honestly, I feel like heat damage, color damage, it has more so to do with the stylist and the knowledge of the stylist as opposed to what they're actually doing to your hair. I've had so much heat put to my hair. I've dyed it quite a few times. And I haven't had any issues, but it was just that one time with that one stylist. I don't even think she's doing hair anymore, y'all. Like, thank God she's out these streets. <sighs> so I started my YouTube channel back in 2018. I believe it was January 2018 that I released my first video. And the reason why I started my YouTube channel is because a lot of people would ask me about my hair. People knew that I had cut it because of the damage that had happened and you know, people were seeing the growth. Since making my channel, I can honestly say that it has made me more accountable with my hair. I'm very grateful for this platform because without it, I just don't even know what would be on top of my head right now, if we're being completely honest. Now that we are in 2020, I've noticed more so that girls are getting more into the weaves and the sew-ins type thing, and I'm not somebody who is there in that area yet, okay? Y'all see how long it took me just to get some braids, okay? I was in my teens. And it's kind of like, hmm, do I want to try that because I want to, or do I want to try that because everybody else is? Questions that need answers. The natural hair journey is not for the weak, okay? It will test you. Y'all, I've been growing out my hair for going on five years since my last big chop, okay? My last big chop took place in July 2015. We're approaching July 2020, crazy. For anybody who's contemplating going natural, go for it, do it. Cause you know what? If you don't like it, you can always relax it, okay? You can always cut it off. You can always get a wig, you can always get a sewing, you can always get braids. But if you're contemplating the movement, girl, join us. If you get on YouTube, you will see that there are so many other women on here who post consistently, who give you tips, who give you product suggestions. It's like a whole community online. That is my natural hair journey, my natural hair story or whatever. Like, comment, share, subscribe. 
Follow your girl on Instagram at By Me Alexis. I don't know what it's gonna be like a month from now when this video comes out, but you guys, please stay safe and I will see you guys in my next video. We have a show. Thought we went up three up bumps in a row. Have her own much with a custom logo. Everything funded by me and the bros. I used to feel standing up in the crowd. Now I stand to